After recovering from the battle with Haps and the bandits, the party used its time to sort out of things. Sigmund, Lanroar, and Ivan each received a horse and gave the rest a pick. Sounds like he wants to start his own stable. Menno made a list of items for Oleg to order, some scrolls and such. She doesn't seem so sure about Lanroar, after seeing him eating the arms of some of the bandits and chasing after his servant. Oleg asked Lanroar about his charter. He did happen to have one on himself. Most of the party seems off about this and his involvement. They are unsure of how such an individual would have received it. Svetlana asked the party if they happen to find any moon radishes if they could bring some to her. They are a favorite of Oleg's. Big Eddie seemed to know quite a bit about them. Hopefully he will be able to spot any. The party headed out, planning to map out the surrounding area for a few days, and make their way back to Oleg's for a good rest and supply. The first day it was uneventful, it was probably for the best. The next morning they awoke to a very drunk head. Sigmund noticed all of their weapons were missing, and after much searching, found them hung in the nearby woods. They are not sure what happened, but Yeti in some darkness happened to climb the tree and hang them. They continued on, and Sigmund was speaking to Landor about the fight with the bandits and other things. Suddenly sparks appeared over Sigmund's head, but just on occasion. Ever here and there, there would be more sparks. And it was soon magic. They quickly realized that whenever someone spoke the word skin, the sparks would appear. What an odd word for a spell, as skin is not a word usually spoken, unless you're talking with Lanroar. More traveling, and they came upon a field of bear traps. Lanroar's horse and McGetty both felt the crack devices. Sigmund dried them off and set off on their way. The next odd thing of the day happened in the afternoon. Sigmund's horse fell on a hill. It was not a steep hill, so for her horse to suddenly slip some pot. Ivan took to the stand, and in odd fashion, took some syrup, hoping to summon whatever is causing so much misfortune, and perhaps offer the syrup as a protection. Two fey appeared, small fairy-like creatures. One, a small dragon with butterfly wings, and the other, a cat-sized cricket with the torso of a woman showed up. He seemed to like the syrup, and he guzzled it down in no time. Played a game of hide and seek with failed most miserably, but the face seemed to enjoy it. He told the party about some biggins that were about, but they were mean. Ivan said they would take care of them, which seemed to please the face. The face pointed out on the map where the biggins were and also the location of the moon radishes. During the night, the camp was attacked by wolves. Everyone was caught off guard, but it didn't seem to matter. The entire group came together, and Menno cast an enlarged spell on signal. This caught the eye of Ivan, as he said the crudest joke that anyone had ever heard. The wolves were defeated and the party slept for the rest of the night, except for Sigmund, who enjoyed a late night coffee. Next day, more mapping and adventuring. Not much new to talk about. When they returned to Oleg's, they were met by a group of armed men, hired protection by Oleg. They were led by a noble warrior, Kestin Garrus. Menno seemed to take note as if he knew or heard of him so somewhere. The priest was there as well, Joe Tavkin. He's a servant of Ariston, who Sig also serves. They spoke for a while. Menno and Lanroar, what can be said about them? The two of them seem to be at each other's throats, unintended. Menno seems to have finally snapped, casting a spell onto Lanroar, which caused his clothes to become a nice shade of blue. However, it did not seem to stop him from pursuing Menno or his servant Fesnok. He wants with that poor soul, let us hope we never find out. Meadow cast another spell on him, turning his manhood into a gangrene, rotten mess. Assumedly, it is temporary, or an illusion, and Lanor finally takes his leave. The next day, Sigmund died today. During a most boring day, happening as they usually do, the party came to rest. Sigmund and Meno were talking, and suddenly, out of nowhere, a giant centipede. Menno quickly cast her enlarged spellus on Sigmund. It seems to be the usual now, but it was of no use. The centipede lashed out at Sigmund. His body fell to the floor. When attacked, it was all it took. Menno prepared to risk his life for Sigmund by dragging his limp body away from the combat while Lanroar tried to distract the creature. But suddenly, a madman, naked except for a small loincloth, appeared out of nowhere. He began waving his arms and making strange noises. Yelling for everyone to take cover and get to safety. 
centipede lashed out at this fool who almost seemed to die. Suddenly, a blast of fire enveloped the centipede. Beznock, the servant, fired a bolt that killed the centipede. Menno rushed forward and began healing Bakken, the bad hermit who saved everyone. He looked over at Sigmund, who was still breathing. The two of them were able to heal Sigmund enough to get him to his feet and into the wagon. Menno mixed him up a coffee. Before he could drink it all, he fell ill. Poison. Neither Menno nor Bakken had thought of the poison, but the centipede 